everyone, it's Miss Lynn from the Southington Public Library with another another day of Apple Valley artists, growing artists ages five to seven. And in today's project, what we're going to learn about is texture. We're gonna learn what texture is and how artists use texture to really make their artworks pop. And then we are going to use the elements of what we learned to make a texture monster. And here's my texture monster. Just to give you an idea, um, I've got a lot of different things on it that have texture, and we're gonna make one as well. So if you've registered for our program today, you received uh, a kit with all of the materials that you needed inside. If you did not register for today's program, that's fine, just, just follow along with us. Um, I'll, I'm just, I'll tell you everything that's in the kit right now. Uh, you got your instructions. There were, there is two sheets of white craft paper or printer paper. You're going to need a Kleenex box. Throw it that way. Um, three paper towel tubes. You don't really need three. I just included three in the kit. Um, but if you had some available, that's great. I gave them a bag of, of, of textured items, just things with different kinds of texture, some Q-tips, um, feathers, some straws, paper cleaners. Um, here are my feathers, I'll just show you really fast. Just some feathers, anything that has textures. I had some, some cotton balls in there. And um, we're gonna go ahead and learn about texture. This is kind of a messy one, that's why Miss Lynn's desk is a little bit messy. You're also gonna need some from home, some crayons or markers or some colored pencils. I have a lot of those. Um, some items with texture around the house, we're gonna talk about that. Some scissors and either some glue or tape. So let's get right into it. Let's learn all about texture. So texture is um, kind of a big word really, and all it means is the way something feels when you touch it. So um, this table is very smooth. It has a smooth texture to it. That's how, what it is. It's a smooth texture. It's how it feels. But when you think about other things, if you think about an alligator, the skin on an alligator is very rough. So it's kind of bumpy and rough. An alligator has a rough texture. And um, cotton candy, who doesn't love cotton candy? It's, it's soft. It's fluffy. It has a soft, fluffy texture. That's all we mean by texture, the way that something feels when you touch it. So if you think about some of the other other things that you that you have around your house, um, you probably have a teddy bear or some other, some other stuffed animal or a doll. And if you you know if you if you just hold on to your teddy bear or stuffed animal, what does it feel like? Is it is it squishy and soft, or is it is it a doll? Is it smooth? Are the the clothes on it just soft, or or what is it? If you go to a window, is the glass on the window, how is that? Is that smooth or rough? How does it feel? And a sponge, if you were washing the dishes, like I know that you do, if you wash the dishes and you squish that sponge, what does that sponge feel like? That's all that texture is. And, and artists use textures in their artwork to really make them shine. Um, there's different reasons that an artist would use texture. They weren't, if, if uh, an artist were drawing or painting something, let's say, that that paper or that canvas that they're working on may be flat and smooth or bumpy if it's canvas, but they really want to make it look, make their, make their art look as real as possible. So they might give it some texture. Um, they might want to make, you know, a dress flow. Or, or the ocean so you can see the ripples in the waves. And, and they might use um, different materials, but we're, we're gonna get to all that. First, we're gonna talk about, about actual texture. Actual texture is um, a fancy way of saying real texture. Some artwork has real texture to it. My texture monster has actual or real texture. If I feel the pipe cleaner, it's nice and soft. If I feel the cotton balls, I can feel this. I can feel feel the, the feather and the softness of the feather. This is real or actual texture, okay? 
Um, another way to make a actual texture is just to add different art materials, like I said, that have texture. Um, so if you touched it, you would actually feel it. Even a painting can have actual texture. Some artists use very heavy brush strokes. They use a lot of paint. So if you could go up and touch it, I wouldn't recommend that in a museum, but if you could go up and touch it, it actually has real texture to, just to make it pop and give you the, the feeling of the texture in the piece. So there are different materials you can use to, to give your artwork texture. Some artists, if they're just painting, you know, in, in uh, you know, straight on paint or just with a, a pencil and paper, that surface is very smooth, but they maybe want to make it look as real as possible. Maybe they don't. Maybe they have a texture from their imagination, like our texture monster here. Maybe they have a texture from their imagination that they want to, you know, give give a regular object a totally different texture and play with, with how that, that looks or how it would feel. Um, but you have something called visual texture. And all visual texture means is that it might be a flat surface, a flat piece of paper or canvas with a drawing on it, but when you look at it, you can actually, it looks like there's real, real texture. So if you had a picture of an animal, the hair would look like if you were to touch it, you can feel the softness of the hair. There's layering to it. There's lines, there's shading, there's different colors. Um, if you did sidewalk chalk painting, there's some people that make incredible sidewalk chalk paintings where it looks like it gives it depth, it gives it dimension. Um, it, it looks like there's, it's not a sidewalk. It looks like you're very high up um, or there's different water. It looks, you can see the ripples in the water. Um, there's, so there's different ways. There's actual or real texture where, where people use real materials to give it texture so you could actually touch it. And there's visual texture where there isn't, re isn't real texture, but it looks as though there is real texture. So artists like to play with those different things. And, and you should too, you should try out the different kinds of, of texture in art and see which you prefer making and, and give it a try. Uh, one great way to learn about texture is to actually do some texture rubbing. And so I've included some items in your, in your kit, but if you have it at home, there was some white craft paper. You can use printer paper. And um, I'm just going to take a colored pencil. Okay. And so there are items around your house that have texture. Okay. So this was just, just, just a, a weaving project I did. It's cardboard and it has this, this yarn that's on it. I also, ooh, I have to. I also have a napkin here. This napkin has texture. If you can see it, there's a little em bunch of embossed little hearts on it. That's a texture. I can feel it when I touch it. We also have some of these, oh, they're really heavy, these magnetic um, shelf placers because it's, you know, we're at the library. And when I put them all together, I get this, this texture right here. And I think that's what I'm gonna do. So you look around your house. You just look around, you give yourself a little bit of a scavenger hunt. And um, just find things that have different textures. You know, maybe the bottom of a sneaker or a, a completed crossword puzzle. Your bathroom floor, if it's tile, there's probably a texture there. This napkin, whatever you're going to do. And um, all you do is you take your item that you're going to make a rubbing of take your paper, put it on top, and then just take a colored pencil or a crayon. If you're using a crayon, you can, if it's easier, take some of the paper off just so have, you have a, a bigger surface area. And if I just rub my colored pencil over it, because this is kind of a wavy little pattern, And if I rub my colored pencil over it, I can get the texture of it. Okay, so it's just a really wavy little pattern. I'm also gonna try, I'm gonna see if I can get this napkin to work too so you can see the parts better. Let's see if that works.
Yep, okay, so I can see all the hearts just popping out. It's kind of hard to see, it's, it's very, very light. You may may not be able to see that. Um, but some other, other objects that you might wanna try are um, small things like um, things that have texture, maybe some coins. Legos work really, really great. Leaves, sandpaper, anything that has different textures, go ahead and, and give them some rubbings and it, it helps you see, really, it really helps your mind see the different kind of textures that, that things have that we don't really notice every day. You could even make a little game of it. You can even put an item down on a table, put a piece of paper over it and have a friend or family member put their, their pencil or, or um, crayon over it and see if they can guess what it is. You can make it a nice little guessing game. It's fun. Um, I did include this little sheet if you did have a key, uh, did have a, a kit. It's called Texture Drawing Practice. And so here's just a little monster just to get started. And um, so it's flat. If I, if I rub it, it's flat. It's a flat piece of paper. But what if I wanted to make it look, so that is its, is its actual texture, but what if I wanted to give it some visual texture? What if I wanted to make it look like, uh, like something else? Let's say I wanted to make it look like it was sharp or spiky. I could use some triangles or zigzags. Kind of like my, I kind of like that. So if I wanted to make it look spiky, gives it a whole new visual texture. Maybe I want it to look hairy. Maybe I could give it a lot of little lines. Okay, so now he's 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 spiky and hairy. Maybe I wanted to make him look bumpy. Hmm. If I add a bunch of small little circles, he looks a little bit bumpy. So you could do that. You've, even if you didn't sign up for our kit, you can still take a piece of paper and then just draw a really simple outline and try making different kinds of textures to see, to see, um, what kind of different ways that you can add visual texture. Like I said, it's just practice to see what you like better, making something with real texture or visual texture or both. So let's practice with our, our texture monster. Um, so like I said, here's my finished texture monster. And I have to say that I love spring. Spring is my favorite time of year. I'm not a big winter fan, so I kind of made it just a, a little monster that was getting rid of some of the snow was kind of melting a little bit and underneath it was this this spring grass i made some flowers for hands out of pipe cleaners those are his hands and then just i wanted to give him a little bit of softness so i used some feathers for his for his eyelashes oh but he's still a monster so i did give him some some big teeth too so all you're going to do, I, I'm not going to really show you too much how to make the texture monster because I really want you to make your own monster. I don't, I don't want you to make one just like mine. I really want you to make your own. And you can use the items in the kit or you can use any items around your home that you want to add some texture. Maybe, you know, maybe you will use all of the, the items in the kit. Maybe you won't. Um, and that and that's fine and you can think about before you get started I would take all of your materials and think about what kind of monster you want to make and maybe there's some items from home always ask your grown-up first before you just take something but all I did was I took a Kleenex box okay so I took a Kleenex box any size and I had some paper towel tubes I just had three kicking around at my house so I had three and I thought about, okay, well, what can I use those for? Maybe, um, maybe I can use them for arms or legs. And you're gonna need, you're also gonna need some scissors, like I said. 
and some glue or some tape and some markers and transit and really anything at home, any kind of papers you want to use at home or not. So I just took my, my Kleenex box and all I did was I made legs out of them. Why did I make them? I used the entire, the entire paper towel tube, but you didn't have to, you can give them smaller legs or arms or, you know, I don't know, maybe you want to make antennas out of it. Maybe it's, maybe it's an upside down monster or, or maybe it's a, it's a crab monster. Maybe you want to, maybe you want to cut these in half. Maybe you want to cut these in half and make it and do whatever you want. This is your monster. So it can be however you like it. Ooh, wow. That almost went off the table. So um, maybe you want to make it like a little crab monster. Oops. And I have four legs on either side and maybe it would walk on all fours. Maybe it's got two short legs. Maybe it's got two small legs like this and it's got five arms or six arms or seven arms or maybe I want to use this and make them make them really small so that he has spikes. I think I might have to make another texture monster, <laughs> actually. Maybe you want to give him two legs. Okay, I know you're going to take a little more time and measure better. Maybe I do want to make him spiky. Like this, right? Or maybe I want to make him spiky like... like that. I don't know. It's your monster. You can do whatever you like. So what you're going to do is basically just look, like I said, I had some, I had some leftover craft grass and I had some, some paper clean, pipe cleaners, some straws. I had Q-tips and some feathers. Like I said, I, I put feathers on it can't really see that but I have some feathers and cotton balls and I just use my I just use my um, tape to attach I just attached my legs to my to my monster with some tape I attached this with some tape I did use glue to put on the to put on the um, cotton balls and I use tape for for the, the teeth and the eyes and the, the feathered eyelashes. And um, I, I'm really not gonna tell you how to make yours because I want you to make yours all your own. But a lot of tape, I did use a lot of tape and a lot of glue and, and that's fine. The last thing I'm gonna do is, is I do have this sheet. I do have this sheet too that I added. Um, once you complete your texture monster with real texture. Why don't you go ahead and try drawing it one more time? So just draw it. Put it up on a, on a table or, or on a bookcase or something and try drawing it and then you'll have you will have done the same project with both actual or real texture and visual texture. So that's uh, March's Apple Valley Artist and I hope that you you enjoyed this kit and this program and maybe you want to make a lot of different kinds of texture monsters and I hope that this 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 lesson also made you a little more a um, little more able to look around and and look at the feel think think about the way different things feel and maybe notice how they how they they feel like they look that's what artists do a lot they like to notice things very nosy <laughs> They like to notice things and then recreate it in their work. So you enjoy making your texture monsters. If you want, send a picture. Um, I'd love to see them. I'd love to see what, what you do. And I hope that you have a very happy spring and uh, happy crafting. And, um, and hopefully we'll be all together again very, very soon. Bye, everybody.